Hello, good evening. Welcome to the programme again. Uh, one of our guests a bit of, uh, had a bit of fun on uh, Twitter by way of trailing this programme. It wasn't at Dom Housen's expense, by the way. He's uh, number two guest this evening from the Sheffield Star. Talk about all things Sheffield Wednesday. We both enjoyed a fantastic game at Hillsborough last night, of which more later. But guest one, because we always uh, promote the ex-players and the managers uh, first in this show, I came across something on uh, Wikipedia uh, which was actually accurate. Um, there are inaccuracies on there. And it surprised me in that our guest uh, in 1990, when he joined Sheffield United, uh, following uh, Dave Bassett's side's promotion to what was then the First Division, now would be the Premier League, he became their record signing. I hadn't realised that, and I put a question out on Twitter today and asked people, and of the many replies I got, only one person guessed it was Paul Beasley. Welcome, Paul. Evening, Alan. Good to see you. Good to see you. I think you were the guy on Twitter that replied and said, Paul Beasley. I yes. think it was only you. Yeah, there's only one. Yeah, I, I definitely there's only replied. One. Yeah, I replied, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Evening, but, um, Dom. It was before your time. Good evening, Alan. S slightly. Only very slightly. Only very slightly, yeah. But what I'd written down here from Wikipedia was that you cost Sheffield United £300,000. Now, bear in mind, this is 1990. And 300,000 was a lot of money then. But you correct, that's what it says. You need to change your Wikipedia page because it was actually 300, 375. Yeah, there's an extra 75 there, Alan. Um, yeah. But it makes a bit of a difference, 75. But yeah, 375, it, it was 375, yeah. Which at the time was, you know, it was, it was, it was a lot of money. This is know? from uh, Leighton Orient, centre back. And you and your colleagues there kept the. Uh, Bassett's Blades in the Premier League for f First Division for four years, although a couple of those years was Premier League. Yeah, um, they, they got promoted in the, at Leicester the season before, yeah. and I came <coughs> in the summer, um, and then that was the old First Division as it was then. So then we had a season, two scenes, and then I went to the Premiership. So, uh, but good times. And the good times are coming back? They are. They're returning. And one of the old boys is, is doing a good job there, Chrissy Wilder, he's doing a fab job, and who you, well. know, who you know well from yeah nice from nice time. nice bloke good nice guy knows what he wants passionate supporters will love it you know and he's, he's proven that at the moment did so. you always know that chris was going to be a manager i, I wouldn't say although maybe because he he he'd he done it on a sunday morning he, he used to do it on a sunday morning after he played he'd go and he'd be involved with the, the team on a, yeah and he'd be involved and that's the way he was he just mm. loved it you know and He's took it to a different level. He's learned to trade, Dom, you know, and now he's, he's coming to fruition, you know. Absolutely. We'll talk a bit, a bit later about what, what you consider might be some similarities between that era and now. Do you, do you go to Bramall Lane and what? Yeah, against? when I can, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm yeah. trying to get there as much as I can, you know, to be honest with you. And I do a bit of corporate every now and then. You know, yeah. go there and, you, and you, you sit there and you sit with the punters and, it's, it, you know, it's good. Yeah, you know, co good corporate afternoon. entertainment. Sheffield United are very good at involving former players and, and so Sheffield Wednesday by the way not mm. a, a single game goes by Dom without us seeing John Pearson or Laurie Madden you know drifting between the lounges at Hillsborough and I think on both sides of the city we're getting royally entertained uh, this season shaping up to be a good season for them both uh, at this moment in time I would say that the uh, the balance of power as that Steel City derby looms ever nearer I, w I would still say is on the red half of the city. Uh, I would give them the edge at the moment, but uh, Wednesday have shown some very positive signs um, in the last few weeks. Picked up some good results. Missed opportunity yesterday. It would have been a statement victory to have beaten West Brom and to put themselves in such a strong position. And psychologically, I think it would have been great uh, to have seen them get into the playoffs for the first time this year. So it wasn't to be, and they've got to quickly pick themselves up again because they've got another really tough match on Sunday at Bristol City before the second international break. Yeah, it, it was a great game and it just lacked that three points, which Wednesday I thought deserved overall. Although you've got to be able to close it out when you're six minutes away from a 2-0 victory, haven't you? Yeah, I have to say I, I've been pleasantly surprised that when Jos Lukai was first appointed Wednesday manager, uh, the impression was that he would make them hard to beat and uh, that actually it wouldn't always be very pretty on the eye yeah. it wouldn't be so thrilling but what we've seen this season is that their games are similar to united 
virtually guaranteeing goals. And the trouble is for Wednesday at the moment um, is that they have gone backwards. When he first arrived, Lukai, he, it was that solid foundation at the back. They were keeping clean sheets on a consistent basis. This season, 11 games in, they're still searching for one. And uh, that, that's the big negative from last night, from my point of view. Uh, as good an attacking players as West Brom have got, and I, I didn't think that they performed anywhere near what they're capable of and what they've shown this year, West Brom, last night. But they did what a good side, yeah, it, yeah, showed what a good side they are by being resilient and they ground out to result yeah. while not playing at the best. One of their many outstanding players yes. came to the fore at the end. And yeah, exactly. Somebody's going to do that. And, and you just hope that Wednesday will learn, really, that uh, I think at the moment that defensively, you, you look to the equaliser yesterday and it, it just shouldn't have happened. Shouldn't have been able to get through there, the, the, it was a, It was a catalogue of errors. You had you know, Joey Pelly Pessy. I, I was just shouting, I was saying to my colleague Paul Davis in the press box, saying, bring him down, take the professional <laughs> foul. One for just, the team. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it was, it was one of those where right. it, you, know, you could see, you know how much ability and talent that Harvey Barnes has got, so bring him down. Yeah. He didn't do it. Uh, but. You know, not all the blame should fall at his door because then you've got Tom Lees, Daniel Padil, senior yeah. players, they were turned inside out as well. And then the goalkeeper yeah. would be disappointed that got something he was beaten at his near post. It yeah. had a lot of power. But this is, at the moment, Wednesday don't look a team that are capable of keeping clean sheets no. on a regular basis. Until they turn that around, then uh, it's hard to make a strong case for them getting into the top yeah. six. Uh, but it's only still a, f a few points. They would have been yeah. in the top six if they held out for a victory there. Um, They've only failed to score in one championship match, I think, on the reverse side of mm. that. It's a bit like yes. a trade-off. I think he's decided his better players are upfield. He's going with th th three up. And I, I think he's right to do that because you might as well entertain. And it's perhaps the best way of getting the result. Are you, are you impressed with what you're seeing entertainment-wise? Because I think in 40-odd years of re reporting football, the game is as probably more entertaining now than it's ever been in in that time what do you think as an ex-player i just i think it's you know it, everything about it it's got faster you know it's quicker you know the, everything's really now it's it's all about speed it's all about you know that how fit they are you know they're so fit if you go back to, to my era you know we th <laughs> we thought we were fit you know we, we actually thought we were fit we were but yeah now it's it's one of them things where you they, they've got everything you know nutrition's They've got, you know, the, the sports scientist, you know, they, they've got everything at their fingertips, which makes them better. And the, life, are the lifestyle's healthier than it was in... in yeah, <laughs> yeah, a little bit, Alan, yeah. But, <laughs> no, you know, it, you take that with a pinch of salt, you know, but at the yeah. end of the day, it's, it's all geared. It's all geared now, yeah. you know, to being the best you can be on that Saturday afternoon. You're a defender, a very uh, dependable de defender. I'd worked out you play for 11 clubs, including a spell, funnily enough, at West Brom. You had lots of moves. Uh, a combined transfer value of, I've had to revise this this evening, of £1.32 million. Pounds. That's the amount. £1.32 million pounds changed hands for this guy in the 1990s. That was considerable money mm -hmm. in those days, Paul. It really was. Yeah, yeah. at the time, well, yeah, I'd, I'd yeah, agree right. with you there, Alan. I'd agree yeah, with you. Yeah. Um, but if you look at the 375, if yeah. you're talking about the 375 mm -hmm. now, somebody's getting that now about a week. Yeah. yeah, in the Premiership, Nonsense. which that, which it just makes it <coughs> unbelievably so. You know that's the way the yeah. football mm. has changed. I think for the better. I think it's going in the right. You know, it's it's, it's exciting. You follow the games, Dom. You know it. It's exciting to watch. It's exciting to go. Mm. It's a good commodity. It's getting better. There's more accents you know, on attacking football, and I think Jose Mourinho is finding that out to his cost because he hasn't moved at the times. Yeah, but it does seem to be a more attacking game and a more difficult game for guys in in your position, maybe, than it, than it was, do you feel? Oh, oh, oh definitely, yeah. I mean, if you, if you, if you flip it to like Harry Maguire, mm. you know, Harry Maguire, he's took it to another level in terms of the way he can play. You know, a centre-half playing, he, he's took it to, onto another level. Yeah. But I bet, you know, at the start, I bet he find it quite difficult adjusting, you know, because every week's a Sanchez, or it's, a, it's, it's someone, yeah. it's someone yeah. like lightning quick, you know. Yeah. And it's, it's difficult for any centre-half in, in the Premiership now. But they, but they could play from the back more than they did in your Just imagine if you'd attempted some of the things that now are encouraged <laughs> of John Egan and, and, and Bash, uh, you know, at Sheffield United, uh, and not to mention 
uh, the, the, the overlapping O'Connell on the left hand, or Bash does it on the other I side. Think if I'd you'd have attempted some <laughs> of those under Harry Bassett, come on, tell us. I tell think me I'd have been picking me P45, to be fair. If that, to be honest with you, because I don't think he'd even faced the goalkeeper. Mm. <laughs> you know, yeah. it wasn't allowed, you know, it wasn't no. allowed at all. But, um, and that was the day where you could actually give the ball back to the mm. keeper, which yeah. is crazy. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, kill, think, and kill the game, kill a bit yeah. of time. Well, it must have been, I mean, it must have been ridiculous the amount of time. It's, it's, so done, wonders, a game, you know. it's done wonders for the spectacle, that really. But that's, that's made the game better. Yeah. It's made it fabulous, and you know, and that's why it's quick. And Do you think the art of defending, though, um, is, on, is on, on the wane? Um, do you think defenders are as capable now as they were in your day, or has it just become more difficult for them? It's tough, isn't it, because the rules have changed. Yeah. You know, as the, when I was playing, they used to say the first one was free. You get away with the second one. <laughs> we know what he's talking about. No, yeah, and then the, th the third yeah. one, you might go have a chance of getting caught. Yeah. But the first one isn't free, necessarily, no, is it? Yeah. That's a yellow card. That's, yeah. Sam, Sam Hutchinson needs to be told this, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> but it's difficult for the boys now because they've got it, you know, there's so much scrutiny on them, mm. you know, in terms of everything, you know, and the players are quick and they're a lot faster. You know, they were still good players, might, you know, just not trying to make a bigger difference, yeah. but it's just that speed. It's yeah. the speed element, and you, you really, you've got, if you're going to make a title, it's got to be right, or yeah. you're in trouble. Sheffield Wednesday uh, have got all on, you know, t to rival and compete with Sheffield United the way they're going. Mm. And I think a lot of um, Wednesday fans were quite fearful of, of this season. Uh, the, the expectations weren't particularly high. Uh, but it strikes me that Jos Lukai is doing a very good job uh, in the way, that, and you can see a thread of continuity there in the way he's constantly bringing youngsters in. I wrote a uh, piece last week where I, I basically said in it that I don't think he has actually received the, the amount of credit that he deserves for the job he's done yeah. because he's had to cut costs, he's promoted youth, he's made big decisions dropping established stars from Sam Hutchinson to Fernando Forestieri, Kieran Westwood of mm -hmm. course being a big one and uh, he has made Wednesday extremely competitive. Uh, that's not to say that all the decision making has been flawless because it hasn't and I, I, and I, I think to balance things you have to look at you know, t last night for example in the West Brom game uh, I think he got his substitutions wrong. I think tactically uh, that you know, he brought Luke, Lucas Schwell on uh, to replace you know, a tiring Atty New Year when maybe I think it should have been Stephen Fletcher would have been a, a more suitable option because they needed the ball to stick up front and it, and it stopped and it kept coming back at them and in, invited West Brom on. And also Connor Kirby, it's, it, it's great that you are promoting youth and you're, and you're giving youth a chance. That's something that's not happened in a long, long time at Wednesday. But was that necessarily the right environment when it was still 2-0 and the game is on a knife edge and you knew that if West Brom got one back, yeah. uh, you know, is that the ideal situation that you, know, you want to put this young player in, you, know, you want to bring him through? Uh, so I think there have been mistakes along the way, but you've got to remember that uh, <laughs> you know, he's been in English football for 10 yeah. months. And he's only had three, an opportunity to sign three, three players. players, two of yeah. those have been on loan. Uh, and, and, and he's I, had to I, work with what he's got. Yeah, and, I agree and he's with you. Making the most of, uh, yeah, he's making I, a I, very good fist of it. I think he is, and you do have to remember that, yeah, expectations they were low going yeah. into the, this season. And again, I think if you ask most Wednesday nights, they they expected to probably finish below Sheffield United again, mm. but they'd want to see progress and they'd want to see the gap cut from what it was last year, which I think was close to 15 yeah. points. And I, I, I think the way that Wednesday are playing right now, the, uh, I think it will be a lot closer this time around. Mm. They're proving competitive mm. against very good teams, uh, as mm. in Leeds United, mm. Stoke City, who are going to be up there, I'm pretty sure, and then last night against West Brom. They, they are competitive in just about every game now, apart from the, the Forest one. Sheffield United, then, similar, I know you've got great respect and rapport with Chris Wilder and everything that he's doing. You, can you pick something like because the, the way the teams play in your era and the way that Sheffield United are playing now, mm. different. Yeah. But what similarities would you pick? Because I'm sure that there are some. There's um, a thread there. Yeah, I, th I think so. They, they, they're looking. They don't look. To, they don't look square. But they're looking to get forward as quick as they can. Mm. I don't mean knocking it long. I mean intricate passes. Yeah. But it's all quick. You know, through the, through the lines and they're getting through quickly. And I mean. The, 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 the wing backs, I mean, 
the centre halves. Sometimes they end up like left wingers. Yeah. They've effectively got it's four. Amazing, <coughs> there's four wing backs actually. He's, he's got two yeah, on each yeah, yeah. side in a way when they're typically going forward, isn't it? And he's got it going because mm. when one does go, the other one gets in. Yeah. You know, if Basham does make a run or someone makes a run, there's someone slots in and they're good at it. Yeah. And yeah. they're hard to stop. It's you know? fantastic to watch as well. You have to Some praise the, the recruitment drive as well. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. season, again, they, it's kicked them on. That John Egan, you know, they spent big money on him, but Oliver Norwood looks a snip. Fantastic. And look at and look at Dave and the Goldrick as well. He's just come yeah. in and he's added goals, yeah. and he's probably already done more than what say Clayton Donaldson did last yeah. season, which didn't work out. But. Yeah, you just you have to take your hat off to him for, yeah. for the job and he is John doing. Egan, record signing, you're yeah. you know, Paul, you're in a good position to judge your position in the team. What do you L think? A little bit of pressure. There's a bit yeah. of pressure at the beginning because Yeah, you can you know, and all of a sudden you have got to sort of go out and produce, you know. And um the boy had a little bit of a sticky start, but he's he's, he's done well. He's come now he looks like he's settled in, which takes time. Mm. It takes time. That, did, you, that, did you feel the pressure, you know, when um, uh, when you went for the club record? Well, there's, right. a fun, there's a funny story because I, I actually signed at 375, so I'm at record signing. Now, crazily enough, on the first day of the season, Harry didn't start me. Right. He didn't start me. Right, I've forgotten that. Mm. He didn't start me. So I'm the record signing mm. and I didn't start. Who did well, start? Was that? I, I couldn't tell you. And I played on the Tuesday night at Derby away. Right. He didn't play me. And at the start, I didn't actually play a centre half. I played in midfield, yeah. the very first game. Mm. Yeah. Then I, I sort of like within three or four games made my way back to <laughs> centre half. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy enough. Do you think it was because yeah. he wanted to ease you in? Maybe, maybe Dom. Yeah, maybe. But he'd had a player called Simon Webster on the way up. Yeah. Who'd, who's a bit like you, like a tough central midfielder. And he had Stan. Yeah, he had Stan. Stan yeah, was there. He wanted, you know, he, had, he wanted Stan yeah. maybe to give Stan a go. Yeah. Cause he got promoted and he just like did, eased me in really. Did he sign you as a centre back or did he think of you as a midfielder? No, like centre back. Centre back. Yeah. yeah. But that, I then, always ask Dave. I always ask him this, <coughs> and he, yeah. but he, you know he says it's good management really. Mm. Yeah. You know it's clever from him, and he yeah. was a, he's clever. He's probably thought, well, I'm going to just ease him in, yeah. and then and we know he's a centre back. But is it a big ask for him to go straight in there mm. against Liverpool at home, first game? He's come from a third division mind to the first division, yeah. so. Yeah. The rest, you know, the rest history, Alan, as he said. And, say. and uh, Chris Wilder's psychology is very, very good as well. well. But also, the, the, while they're very different people and the style of football is very different, the emphasis on having good, strong characters is pretty much the same, I would have thought, when you look back to your time. Well, I th I'd say so. I think that's the way Chris has been brought up. Yeah. You know, since the, that's the way he's been brought, brought up. And, you know, to think that way, mm. you know, um, Harry... We relied on that. Yeah. That that sometimes that got us a result. Yeah. You know, um, just through being together throughout the week, not just on a Saturday. Just it was just a, a special group of players that was. Yeah. That would be you know as, as a proven. He stayed some. I think possibly before you arrived, there was there were two cliques, uh, north and south. There was, yeah. But, and he, he he deliberately staged a fight. Oh, the two groups to get them together. We had a fight every day, Alan. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> there was a fight every day. In night, there was a fight every day. Not in serious, yeah. but there was a rumble every day. Mm. Yeah. That's the way we were made. Yeah. And was it literally over like that? Yeah. Happened and, and then Gone. pals yeah. or there yeah. was no. nothing pa lingered? Mm. No, nothing. What were the fights no. over then? It could be anything. I mean, I mean Harry used to have, we used to have um, North East South on a Friday. Yeah. But they used to be, they used to be like tear-ups. <laughs> We're playing the next day. It used to be like blood and thunder on a Friday after Friday morning, <laughs> but it seemed to rub off. It mm, rubbed mm. off on a Saturday. Mm. It, it did. Eventually, you know, it, it just rubbed off. There was yeah. no malice at all, yeah. you know. And, and Chris Wilde has always insisted on training as you play. That oh, is yeah. similarity. Yeah, yeah. He, from day one, he wants full competitive, you know, matches in, yeah. in training, and people going out hammer and tongs at it. Well, Chris will win. He was like when he's a player, he was like that. You know, yeah. even a five aside, he'd want to win. He wouldn't yeah. want to lose. Whereas other <laughs> managers, it, 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 kind of fearful of injuries, let's do some light work or something or some ball work. But he's not like. No. We've just reached the most interesting co co conversation of a fascinating twenty minutes, and we're going to have to take a five-minute break. But we will be back. We will resume it. James Gregg will join us. Dom Housen and uh, Paul Beasley. See you in five. <laughs>